Hello and welcome to my first real proper Let's Play on Total War Free Kingdoms. I've been given early access by Creative Assembly to play this for your viewing pleasure and my playing pleasure for that matter. I'm going to play a campaign, first of all, with Liu Bei. I will definitely be doing loads of Let's Plays on this game, don't you worry your pretty little head about that, but we're going to do the first one with Liu Bei. Uh, as you can see, I've also unlocked the Tyrant Dong Zhuo. I uh, actually took an entire evening to basically uh, play a campaign until I've declared myself Emperor, which unlocked him. You can also uh, unlock him by defeating him in battle, but that is more difficult to do because he doesn't spawn as often. But anyway, Liu Bei, that's the one we're going to be playing as right now. So this woman and man are going to be talking through me for a few seconds, but that's okay, I can't understand them anyway, so I'm sure they've got very interesting things to say, but uh, I, I don't know what they're saying. Uh, it's probably it's probably this this little bit of text right here, or at least some of it. But anyway, uh, speaking of Chinese text, by the way, in case you if, if you don't like it, if you want English text, that is an option as well, or English voice, I should say. Uh, you, can, you can change that in the settings, but I like the authentic Chinese uh, voices. So... Um, Liu Bei, our uh, virtuous idealist, starting the situation normal, and most of the uh, initial or coalition ones are, except for Cha Cha, who is easy, and Guan Xu is, which is very hard. We're gonna play as Liu Bei now. Oh no, they're gonna talk again. What have I done? So he's a commander, uh, which means he excels at expiring friendly troops, but weaker in melee. He's best grouped with red new melee cavalry. His character specialization is that he gets plus four public order faction wide and minus fifty percent upkeep for militia infantry faction wide. While he is either your faction leader, faction heir, or your prime minister, but he is of course our faction leader. So until he dies, essentially we get these bonuses, which is pretty damn solid. It makes him kind of like the Oda Nobunaga or the Oda clan at least from Shogun Two. Um, that said. Liu Bei does have a bit of a, a downer where he can only recruit a single army in the beginning of the game as opposed to three armies that the other clans or other factions, sorry, can recruit. So the 50% upkeep for a militia infantry reduction isn't really that helpful if you can only have a single army. But anyway, um, I'm kind of going a little bit into too much detail here. Uh, I will be doing a, a faction overview on Liu Bei very soon as well. It might already be up or it might go up later today. Uh, I'm trying to get it up on a release day, or well, not release day, the day that I'm allowed to release videos, which is the 16th of May, which is today if you're watching this when this video just came out. I just don't know if that video goes up before or after this one. Anyway, faction specialization is unity, is our special resource. It increases our prestige, uh, it unlocks administrator positions and increases income. Uh, you can use it, uh, or sorry, it increases if generals are satisfied. You can also use it on the unique assignments to increase the satisfaction of generals. It's kind of like a trade-off. You spend unity to make your uh, generals happier, but when they're happier, they will get you then unity back again. Uh, you can also use it to, as we can see here, annex and integrate Han Empire settlements. So basically, we can spend our resource unity to take annex or to take uh, Han territory for free. We don't have to fight the army that's inside or the garrison or anything like that. Uh, our playstyle focus is companionship, which kind of means, you know, you're just, you need to have some friends because we can only have an army, uh, a single army, we can't really, you know, we, we need to make sure people don't hate us too much. Our unique features, uh, our unique units, first of all, are Yi Archers and Yi Marksmen. These are uh, basically just two better Archer units, uh, which are pretty solid. That said, with the minus 50% upkeep for Militia Infantry, you don't really want to recruit too many of these because they aren't Militia, so you don't get discount for them. Uh, we have the Shu Han Tax Collection Building, which is essentially a slightly upgraded version of the regular Tax Collection Building. Uh, gives a little bit more peasantry income and a little less unhappiness from it. Uh, and then we have Confederation available from the start of the campaign rather than later on when you get to a higher rank for other generals or lords, which is nice. And of course, our two noteworthy characters are Guan Yu and Zhang Fei. Pretty sweet. Options, I'm playing on Legendary Legendary, of course. Uh, what else? Um, I think beyond that, you can see the stats here. Uh, that's all good. We're playing on romance mode. I will probably be doing a records campaign at some point too, but for the moment, let's just stick to romance because it's grown on me a lot. Uh, finally, I should mention that uh, I'm not using any mods, which would be impossible to do anyway because there's no mods available yet since you know the game hasn't actually released yet. Um, but when the game releases and there are mods, I will likely be using a single one, which will be the camera extension, like moving up the camera further in battle, basically, uh, mod, because that's the one I always download for every single Total War game. Um, and when that happens, I'll put it in the description uh, as well, and I'll probably tell you guys about it. Anyway, 
time to start the campaign. Luoyang 是要干扰土地匡扶汉室如今董卓牵结天子官张二将不忘誓约愿效命疆场董卓前途费力定要制裁此贼主公我等今已如破风利剑但听主公号令All right Our first mission Establish your power Lord Liu Bei Dong Zhu has seized the emperor and now wields imperial power to his own tyrannical ends The Han Dynasty must be saved, even if you must take their lands back by force. First, we must defeat the nearby Yellow Turban insurgents, then find a place to build our strength. Nearby. This is the name I can't pronounce. I don't know how to do it. I, I have listened to the Free Kingdoms podcast, but I've forgotten because this is quite a ways back now. But yeah, it's Tao Kwan or something like that, but I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it. Uh, and Kong Rong are Han loyalists, loyalists who may offer us aid. The time to act, my lord, is now. To make our way past the Yellow Turbans, find a power base to build up your strength and protect Kong Rong and Tao Kwan. Our actual mission that we need to do right away is to engage this guy in battle. We get a taste of victory, military supplies, and morale. I'm probably not going to bother reading every mission every single time, uh, but I think the first one kind of makes sense because it's like an overlapping kind of mission. Um, so, I should probably also mention, you can see it right away, I'm using the extreme unit size uh, option, which is new in this Total War. Or, yeah, in this Total War. Uh, they actually didn't, they, they only added it a couple months ago, um, but uh, it's a good decision because it makes sense. So, Liu Bei. Now, I don't want to spend too much time because I know you guys probably just want to see action, 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 but I, I want to spend at least a couple minutes to explain some of the things that are going on. Um, but first of all, we've got some in city, we've got four in city, which that's, that doesn't happen very often. We've got a red stallion, that's pretty solid right there. Uh, okay, so we got some ancillaries, which I'll give away to my generals in a moment. Um, so, let's have a look, right? At, at least at Liu Bei and, and just at the, the free characters, Zhang, uh, Zhang Fei and Guan Yu as well. So, one of the most important things to note is if you hover over his name, you can see a whole bunch of information that is quite important. It's actually the same for the other ones as well. You can see, for example, with Zhang Fei, he has plus 12% melee damage for all shock cavalry, faction-wide, but only if this character is Prime Minister, Heir, or Faction Leader. Which means that currently that effect is not active, because he is not our Faction Heir, Faction Leader, or Prime Minister. Currently we only have one of those three positions filled, and that is Liu Bei. We can't put one of them in our Faction Heir, we can only put a Sun there, but if he were to die, then one of the Generals would take over as Faction Heir. Um, but right now, we can't just, like, we can't um, ca make one of them our Heir, essentially. So, um, unless you can, but I don't think you can. I'm pretty sure we can we can marry people, but no, we can't uh, we can't make them into our. Uh, I just want to make sure actually because I haven't tested that myself yet. But anyway, so um, Guan Yu has some stats as well. So he's got plus fifteen percent armor for all spear infantry, but again only if he's prime minister or faction leader, and plus six uh, six morale when defending. But again the same thing. So those things are important to know. In case one of these ever becomes uh, our faction leader, prime minister, or because prime minister is something we can definitely give to them once we've unlocked that position, which doesn't happen for a while, but even so. 
Another thing we want to look at is the abilities that every uh, general has already got unlocked, which in this case we've got mobility, which gives us uh, morale when attacking, when commanding. When commanding means that he is the actual commander in the army, which he currently is. If he's on the left, he's the commander. If I want to, which I will do, I'll show you why in a moment, but if I want to make Guan Yu the commanding uh, general, then I just click this button, he goes over to the left here, and he, he'll be the leader uh, of the army, the commanding general. Um, certain buffs only happen when a character is the commanding general, in this case the plus 10 morale when attacking. Um, and the battle running speed is for his units in his retinue. Then we've got some building upkeep that's for administrative commandery, so if he's an administrator somewhere then he gets that, but he, he, he probably won't be. Um, Zhang Fei currently has a scare, which is a ability for him himself, not for his retinue or anything, then the, again the Temeral on the territory when commanding. We've got the Sundering Strike, a special ability. Uh, I should also see, he has... Um, there you go, I didn't even look at this one yet. Um, he has the ability Stone Bulwark, which gives a 100% range block chance and makes uh, his units around him for 30 seconds unbreakable, which is pretty insane. Uh, basically, you just go into a, a, an archer fight, you activate this ability, you win the archer fight or the ranged fight. So, anyway, um, Zhang Fei I was looking at. So, he's got the Sundering Strike, which is uh, melee evasion reduction and a little bit of splash damage. And then we've got this uh, Endurance, which reduces or, increase, or gives us fatigue resistance for his own retinue and uh, reduces attrition from military supply shortage. But most importantly, Guan Yu, he's already level 4. He starts at a higher level than both Liu Bei and Zhang Fei for some reason. He's got the Endurance as well. He's got Binding Fury, which is just a straight up 15k splash damage with a fairly short cooldown of 1 minute. He's got uh, plus 5% replenishment, which is quite useful, re redeployment cost, but again, doesn't matter because he doesn't get that. Uh, available armies, he doesn't get that, but plus 25% campaign movement range is pretty good. And he gets that morale when attacking, so that's why Guan Yu is actually going to be my commanding general. There's no um, penalty for doing that, you can go away by the way. There's no penalty for making him our general, we don't lose any movement uh, range or anything. Unless we did. I'm not sure if that... It doesn't matter, we can still reach the mine. I actually didn't check that. Um, so, that's basically that. Uh, we have a couple of things to give away. So, for example, the first of... We, we got that Red Stallion, which gives us high, more instinct, uh, a chance of escaping capture post-battle, and 20 charge bonus. So I'm going to give that to Zhang Fei, because Zhang Fei is... Uh, a vanguard, so his main statistic is instinct. Of course, he benefits from every single statistic, but right now, I may as well give him that better horse. Makes sense for him as well, since he's going to be charging into infantry a lot. Um, we also have a couple of followers, so we got some cunning, cunning, and expertise. Let's see if we got anything good. We got trade influence, but again, uh, prime minister, era faction leader. Um, character experience, but the same thing goes for that, and then the administrative commander. Okay, so we definitely want to give the um, plus ten percent trade influence to. Uh, Liu Bei because he currently he actually is our faction leader so that actually we, we get that 10% uh, trade influence benefit uh, Our trade influence is here. It's actually only a hundred right now But I guess maybe it takes a turn or something for it to be active and then it'll be what if I go into the screen No, well, it'll, it'll update soon um, And then we have uh, what, what else we had we had the characters we had just plus four cunning and plus four expertise I uh, I'm probably just gonna keep both of these right now and give them to someone else um, so that's okay. Uh, and then uh, we had a uh, accessory as well, which is plus 6 to 40, which I'll give to Liu Bei as well, because his main statistic is a 40. So that works out well. Okay, so that's our things that we can give away right now. There's, no mu there's not much diplomacy we can do, because we don't own any territories. We can't uh, trade with anyone or anything, so we'll do that after we've taken Dong Iron Mine, or the Iron Mine in the Dong Commandery. But uh, to make that happen, we got to murder some people, so let's finally actually do that. Uh, this is... Very much an auto resolve, but I think I will just fight it because it's the first battle in the game. Um, so you can see here we got a 55% chance of capturing him, which is pretty solid if we win the battle, of course. A couple of peasant spearmen, a couple of peasant archers, and a couple of peasant warriors. These are all uh, just the trashiest tier stuff. This is yellow turban rebellion units, essentially. Uh, they get they get better units as well, don't worry. But um, yeah, these are actually some of the basic units that they get. You see the statistics on the left. Statistics are probably going to be a bit confusing for the moment. Uh, I can go over them quickly if you want. So this is morale. Uh, obviously, the higher the better. It's it, for me as well. Even though I've I've put in 50 hours in this game so far, it's still confusing to me as well. Um, if I'm honest with you, but there you go. Hit points. So obviously, this is one of those things where the more units you have, uh, or like the bigger the unit is, the more HP they've got. So this uh, 60 cavalry, they've only got 101k. These guys got 144. This is melee charge bonus, melee attack rate, so how fast the unit attacks essentially over a minute. Uh, this is melee damage base, this is armor piercing, 
this is melee evasion base, this is melee evasion from your shield, this is your regular armor base, this is your armor from your shield, this is range block chance, and this is your movement speed. Now, I've went over that super quickly, so I'm sure you've completely forgotten it already, and it is difficult for me as well, honestly, to keep track of all of it, but over time you will get used to it as you play the game, so. Shall we do a battle? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, there's, of course, also the fact that we have different roles. Now, I'm... I'm Hoping that you guys would have already seen some of my other videos or other people's other videos so you kind of know what the rules already mean. Uh, but currently we have three different roles. We have Liu Bei, sorry if I'm talking through this by the way. Liu Bei is a commander, uh, Guan Yu is a champion, and Zhang Fei who is a vanguard. So a commander means, as you said, or as we saw earlier, he's good at buffing other units. Okay, it's, it, you can stop talking now Liu Bei. Uh, good at buffing other units, uh, but he's not particularly great in melee. A champion is basically a general killer. You want to—it's like an assassin, if you will. He's good against other generals, but not particularly great if uh, locked in melee. Or well, he's okay still, but he's still a guy, you know, uh, like a hero. But he's not going to be as good as, for example, a vanguard. A vanguard is going to be super good against massive units, essentially. Um, one thing I always also like to do is just have a look at all of our units uh, and pro probably the generals too. Why not? Um, when we get a new game, you know, it's always nice to just have a cheeky peek at all these units. So here's our G Militia unit. Um, not quite Yari Shigaru, unfortunately, but they're still not bad at all. Uh, then we've got our uh, Archer Militia unit, which are once again... Actually, I think we have two different Archers. We have uh, Yi Marksman. And this is our Archer Militia, so Yi Marksman probably look a little bit different. So here are uh, Archer Militia, yeah, and these are our Yi Marksmen. They've got a little bit of extra armor and stuff. Then we've got our cavalry. These are our. Um, I think we have two different kinds of cavalry as well, actually. No, these are just saber cap. Never mind. We only have one. This is actually a more of a higher tier cavalry unit, but. Well, not high tier, like mid tier, if anything. We've got our sword unit, our saber militia, if you will. I definitely won't. Uh, and then, of course, we've got uh, Guan Yu right here. He looks very recognizable. Liu Bei. Uh, and, of course, Zhang Fei. Now, people have been complaining, I saw a bit on Reddit and stuff as well, people complaining about how characters look now. I still think they look quite good. You can't really expect them to look like their character art, because, you know, that's character art. It's not really uh, a reasonable expectation, I think, but... Anyway, shall we fight this battle also? I think that's probably a good idea to do at some point, right? Oh, not you. Um, there is that thing, actually, that it's in the game where if you, dra you take your entire army and you drag him, it makes a formation for you, but I've got that turned off because I'm not a loser. Sorry, no, I just, you know, I'm experienced with the game, so I don't want that anymore. Um, and then our spears in the back. These guys have got shields, the, the G Militia don't. They're also not spears, by the way, they're halberd, so I should also keep that in mind. Um, and then I'm going to put Guan Yu up front, because I want to duel that man right there. Uh, Liu Bei can sort of sit there, and Zhang Fei can go right there. That is that. So let's go forward. Now... Um, another thing is, I've because I, I talked about classes essentially, okay, they're coming up fast, so let's actually just run into this position here. You can go up, because I, I want you to duel. Uh, but one thing we, yeah, I talked about classes or, or, or roles essentially. This character is a Yellow Turban Rebellion guy. I'm going to take that challenge. Um, so he's actually completely different, again, um, to, to he's, there, there's three different Yellow Turban Rebellion uh, general roles essentially. I don't actually know what they are yet exactly. I've played a little bit with them, but not too much, so I don't exactly remember. I should also charge you up right now. I want you to go murder everyone for me. And I want these guys to go kill their cavalry or their archers, but it appears their archers are being fairly well protected right now. All right, so he's got a special uh, 15k splash damage ability. He's gonna use that and absolutely murder this guy. It's gonna use it right there. Boom. See that health just drop like crazy. Are we being shot yet? I don't think so. When we are, we're using my ability to basically say, like, nah, I'm not gonna take any damage actually. There you go. Arrow's coming in. Alright, so when he dies, actually, I should start charging my cab over there as well now, I think. This unit's probably gonna have a good, a, get a shot off on us, but that's okay. Zhang Fei having an absolute blast in there. It's all good. We've uh, actually routed the unit already, and a lot of wavering going on right now. If this general dies, we might just see an instant rout. Okay, they're uh, yeah, they're wavering. Everything else is routing, so I can't imagine that unit's going to last much longer. One use one. There we go. We've already won. We lost a guy. Well, 
that guy's family is getting murdered after today. Uh, we don't have to finish this off. We could do for some extra experience. Uh, there's no need to though, because this is one of those armies that disappears right away off the face of the earth when you win the battle. Uh, but getting a little bit of extra experience in our cav is never a bad thing necessarily, so... Might as well, I suppose. Just quickly run everything down. Probably should have had you guys come over. I'm, uh, I'm not going to go down to the last man though, just kill a couple men. I don't even know if this is actually getting me to much experience to be honest, but that's fine. As I said, they're all going to die regardless, so I don't actually have to do that. This unit was the one who got a single kill. Impressive, must be said. Well done, my man. My good man. Lost one guy. Alright, so here's uh, where you can see we get unity from... Uh, Basically, ransoming or release, and we get money. That's what you always get. You always get money, and then we get unity as well as this faction. I'll have a look at uh, unity in a second, too. The other options are the same as always, except right now it's 0% replenishment because we lost one guy. Got a lot of kills, though. So we're going to ransom and release because the unity is very important, as I will show you momentarily. So we got the military supplies and morale, and we got a new mission to take the iron mine in Dong Province or Dong Commandery. A reward is plus 5 public order and plus 25 faction support. So. Unity. So here's our unity. Uh, basically, you can see here, uh, the total unity you can have is 1,000. We currently have 120. So you can see that free isn't really all that much, but still it adds up. Um, we get four every turn from characters because we have four happy characters, essentially. Uh, I think Liu Bei himself counts as one, even though he's, you know, he doesn't have a satisfaction thing, but he's smiling. So that's probably an indication that he's happy, right? Uh, but yeah, these guys are happy, so I'm getting one from each of them per turn as well. Uh, and then as we go up, we get extra prestige, extra available administrator positions, and extra income from all sources. And that just goes up further with every uh, tick, essentially. So you want to get up here, but then again, you can also spend 50 uh, uh, points to annex a town, which basically means you take it for free, no fight, which is kind of useful too, but is it worth losing 50 points? I don't know. That's something we'll have to find out over time. Um, I think other than that, there was nothing else I needed to show you, just that, I think. So let's go take Dong, Commandery. So this is a, a, a basically a defensive town. Um, it's a, uh, well, it's an iron mine, uh, but they have towers and stuff. Towers currently, as I've said in previous videos, are incredibly overpowered. I kind of liked how strong they were because it made me feel like I could actually defend a town with a smaller garrison and no heroes. Uh, but they are going to be they are still overpowered, but they will be nerfed possibly before release I'm not sure if that's going to be before release or not, but it's going to be happy. It's it, they're working on it right now. In fact um, I think mostly it's going to be made so that they don't kill heroes as fast as they did before because they, they were basically hero murderers uh, Before or they are now and then hopefully they won't be by the time you get your hands on the game uh, But either way the, what I was gonna try to say is that this is a pretty small army and if we're super far in our favor So I'm just gonna uh, auto resolve this one and we'll just replenish our men over time, so that's going to be okay. I will be fighting battles, don't worry. I just, you know, right now, I figure I may as well resolve that one. Um, so we got our mission, plus 5 public order and plus 25 faction support, faction wide. We got our new mission, which is to recruit and maintain a total of 17 units at the start of the new turn. We currently have 15. Uh, we get bonus experience for units per season and plus 10% replenishment. So basically it's like saying, recruit an army now, you're going to make a lot of money. Also, establishing order, we got some extra experience for Liu Bei with the settlement's liberation. The people here are freed from oppression. It is a small start, but it's significant. All of China must know the same freedom. Basically, whenever you do something significant like this, you uh, you get a bonus bit of experience. Rank and station. Through tireless effort on behalf of the people, we will grow stronger as warriors and as kin. In this way, there's nothing that we cannot do. Another bit of experience, which actually made them level up. So the commanding general, which in this case is Guan Yu, actually gets bonus experience generally. Um, but your faction leader will generally get bonus experience from little events that pop up like that. So the options we currently have is a Mighty Knockback, which gives him uh, extra charge speed. Oh, sorry, no, it gives him uh, extra damage from knocking back enemies and extra charge speed as well for his own retinue. Uh, or we can go for faction-wide support and discipline, which means that if the general dies, the, uh, there's no uh, morale penalty for his retinue, essentially. Um, the faction support is nice, but I think right now the mighty knockback and mighty knockback on him is not that important But the charge speed on him is gonna be quite important because he's going to be a cavalry commander 
The one of the downsides of Liu Bei's faction in the beginning at least is that you can only have one army and you definitely want to have Zhang Fei and Liu Bei and Guan Yu in your army, but Zhang Fei and Liu Bei are both cavalry commanders. Liu Bei is a melee cavalry commander and Zhang Fei is a shock cavalry commander. That kind of means that unless you want to really, you know, unless you want to have a couple of shock cav and a couple of melee cav and fill the rest of the retinues with random units, which I don't really want to do. I probably just want to have one character be focused on the cavalry and then one character focused on like archers for example. So I'm probably going to have to give Zhang Fei a bunch of archers which I don't really want to do because that's not what he's focused on at all. That's not what he makes better. He, he gets bonuses for shock cavalry as well. Um, but for the moment that's what we'll do until we can have a second army at which point we'll take Liu Bei out by himself. Probably have Guan Yu and Zhang Fei together and then Liu Bei with some random generals. Uh, and then we can fix it all up properly. But um, anyway... So for the moment, he's going to be a melee cavalry commander, and he's just not going to have any cavalry. He's going to have some random units. We can upgrade the iron mine. Uh, we don't have as much money left over next turn if I do that. Well, first of all, let's have a look here. Because we now have a town. We can possibly get some trade going. We can get trade with Tao Quan. Again, not sure if I'm pronouncing his name properly, but I do apologize if I'm not. Uh, so he's one of the people that we need to be friendly with. I wonder if I actually shove a non-aggression pact in there. That's uh, even... That's really good, okay. Because I know for a fact that... Uh, well, no, actually, no. I'm, I'm not going to say anything. It's kind of a spoiler. Then again, I'm going to be talking about it in my faction overview video, but still. Uh, you can also see that resource uh, current trade influence went up, so we're 110 now instead of 100. Um, but yeah, no spoilers. You'll see in the campaign at some point. Um, so I'm going to ask a bunch of money from him per turn. Because you can generally get more money per turn than just straight up asking for a certain amount of money. Uh, you can type, of course, but I like doing this back and forth thing because it's a 10% kind of thing every single time. So um, I'm sure you guys know how percentages work. If I'm on 100 and I reduce it by 10%, it goes down to 90. If I then increase it by 90 uh, by 10%, it goes up to 99, not 100, of course. So if you go back and forth, it'll eventually get to the point, point where you need it to be. Uh, anyway, small thing. So the trade is going to be worth 257 and our regular payment is going to be another 165 per turn. Could maybe make it 166, but nope, he doesn't even want that. Um, so we're going to make uh, yeah, about 420 bucks or so extra per turn, which is not bad. So we're going to sign that deal. Now, one of the things you'll see immediately is the proposed unification, which is basically our faction-specific thing that we can immediately um, essentially uh, confederate with someone. And now, of course, he doesn't want to, because why the hell would he? But, um, yeah, it is something that's available to us right away. So if we are at war with someone, we could possibly get um, get them to confederate with us very uh, like very quickly. Right. Um, so I'm going to get rid of all these things here. Uh, character rank, okay. And then, yeah, I'm making the mine, which means I'm not going to have much money next turn, but that's okay. We really don't have that much to do in terms of money. One thing I want to do, you can see it here. We have, of course, the 50% reduction on upkeep cost for militia infantry units. So these guys cost 30 upkeep. This unit is a little bit better because it's one of our unique units, the Yi Marksman. But because they're not a militia unit, we can pay 179 for them. That's... <laughs> that's six times as much as this unit. So I gotta have six archer militia for one of these. This is not worth it. So I'm gonna replace this guy with a regular archer. Um, but we can't do it right now because we are not allowed to recruit units on turn one. Which I think is a nice little feature. It means the AI is not gonna go fucking mad on turn one either like they always do. Uh, anyway, so I think that's all we can do right now. I've shown the cord very quickly. There's reforms, but that comes up in a couple turns. I can show you the, the one we've got already got unlocked, because you, of course, start with one unlocked right away, which is resettlement incentives. We get population growth, which is nice. Um, other than that, I think we're good. End turns. I'm sure if you've seen the video before, you will already notice that they are super fast, which is very nice. Very happy with how that works. All right, so we've got a little bit of money. We've uh, a new faction capital for the Yellow Turban Rebellion and some character developments, okay. Right, so first things first, I want to replace a couple of my units. So first of all, this guy, I want to get some more cav in as well. Now, the 50% upkeep cost reduction is only for militia infantry, so not cavalry. So, because otherwise I would have possibly also replaced the Saber Cavalry, which we can't actually recruit right now. 
um, with these guys, because they are a, a significant amount cheaper. These guys are 170 per turn, these guys are 111, but these guys are also significantly better um, to the point where it's worth that little bit extra money. If these guys were reduced by 50% upkeep as well, and they'd be like 55, 56, I would have probably replaced them. But because the difference isn't as big as you'd like, you'd think it would be, I'm not going to bother. So, um, what are we going to do though? So this guy's definitely getting replaced, but I want to replace him with cavalry. So I don't know if I want to do that right now because that's a lot of money. Um, yeah, I probably will. Yeah, let's do that. And then I want to replace him with cavalry as well, but we don't really have the money for that right now. So let's hold off on that. I do have enough money to recruit a couple units. So why don't you recruit a couple of shitty archers? Just so we can start replenishing them, and that will also finish off our mission too. So then, for the rest of the units, we're going to replace these four guys, probably all with archers too. We'll replace these guys with the G Militia, because he's, uh, again, he's based on having uh, those kinds of units. So you want to have uh, bonuses for him, uh, for his, his spear units, essentially. Um, and then we want to have a, like one more cav and then a couple of uh, infantry, like these guys or something in here, just to have a couple sword units or shield units as well up front. But for now, I think that's fine. I'm not going to go on the offensive. I think I'm just going to let myself replenish for a turn or two. Uh, see what happens. I, I guess I could go. No, I'm liking this replenishment. Let's just hold off a turn. We're not that much in a rush. You don't want to expand too fast as Leo Bay because, again, you can only have one army. So it's very difficult to actually defend all your territory in the first place. It's winter as well. So if I would have gone out and attacked him next turn, I would have been winter now. So... All right, we got Growing Might, uh, bonus experience for units per season and replenishment rate, which is nice. So our new mission is to hold free settlements, including the following Langye small city, which is just down here. Uh, and our unity will grow if we do that. Now, this is a Han settlement, so we can actually just kind of walk in here and take it from them uh, for 50 unity, but I probably won't want to do that. Right, so I think we're going to take this turn just... Recruit. Uh, I don't have that much money actually. I was gonna say recruit the rest of our units. I can recruit the rest of our units minus the cavalry probably. So we got a couple more G infantry in here. Maybe I'll just leave it like this. We can't actually spend anything else anyway, and we're not making that much money anymore. So I think I think that's fine. I'll wait one more turn in town, and then I think we'll go towards Taishan Town. Um, we have also now met Kong Rong, but I have no trade available. I could possibly get a non-aggression pack with him, though. Let's see what he says. Point. Okay, I don't think I'm going to get any money out of that. This generally doesn't really go down, though. So we, we can get a non-aggression pack with him. Which I probably do want to do. Again, the game kind of says you have to protect Tao Kwan and Kong Rong. You don't have to, of course. You can just do whatever the hell you want. But we may as well keep them uh, keep keep our backs safe, I suppose. Um, I would like to get something out of it. But I guess I'll just take this trade. Or, uh, I don't want military access to he doesn't want that. Okay, no, just an aggression pack then. Alright. Do we keep him friendly? And then, yeah, I'll wait one more turn and then we'll start heading towards Taishan Town. I maybe should have moved out this turn just to see if there was someone there or not, but that's okay. Okay, so our army's not entirely full yet. We're gonna replace this guy with another calf. We're gonna replace these guys with more of them and all of these with archers, but for now, it's, it's alright. Um, we also probably have this building done yeah, next turn, so we need some money soon. So I'm going to go ahead over here. I can get a 70% chance of an ambush if I have enough movement left over if I do that. I need 25%. Yeah, we can do that. And there's no one in Taishan right now, so we can just walk in and take it, which is nice. So I'm going to ambush, see what happens. And we got a reform. Right, so now, I actually need to see this, because we can get a, a reform that gives us an extra... Uh, trade uh, route, but I yeah. So Kong Rong has four trade. Wow, he's got a lot of trade. That must be a faction unique thing for him. Uh, but yeah, we have trade available. Like we can trade with someone, and Kong Rong will definitely want to trade with me. So if I get the foreign envoys, we get plus one tra available trade agreements, which means that I can get another trade. Re uh, trade. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, it's fucking ex self-explanatory. Uh, however, it's not here. Oh, because we're not actually boarding him. Right, so we got to take um, Taishan first. Okay, so after we take Taishan next turn, then we will... Um, then we will be able to trade with him. I think. Unless that's not owned by him. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Either way, it's it, it'll, it'll be worth it. Don't worry. Unless he starts trading with four people this turn, which would suck. But I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, anyway, let's end the turn. I'm going to save the little bit of money that I have right now. And... 
Looks like Taishan is still open for the taking, so we're just gonna walk on in and take it. We are already at war of Wangsha. Oh, there's an army next to it. Okay, that's interesting. I wonder, actually. Uh, let me just have a look here. It looks like I should be able to reach them if I... Well, if I move... Like, if I stop the siege, I'll go over here. The thing is, can I walk around the town, though? And attack him? I guess I can f I can just try. I can also just siege him out, and if he wants to attack me, that's fine. Looks like he owns this as well, though, so his main army is probably going to be around here somewhere, so I might not want to take too long here. My army is strong, but I don't know how large his main army is. I don't know if I could take on two armies, you know? Maybe I should have recruited a few more units, but that's all right. Um... So let me just, uh, let me break the siege here. Let me just quickly check if I could run around and attack this army. It looks like I could. Oh, he ran away though. Okay, well in that case, I will just delegate this one, I think, and just take the town. I could fight it myself. Um, it's one of those things where this is like a small town, and because of the arrow tower's op right now... op that's hilarious. Thank you for laughing. Um, it would actually be a very painful battle. And I prefer not doing it. But on the other hand, I feel like if I auto-resolve this, people are going to be like, you're always auto-resolving everything. Oh my gosh, Mr. Smart Donkey. Let's have a look at the map view here. Um, it's only a couple of shitty peasant warriors and stuff. You know what? I'll fight it. Because I know people are going to want to see this battle. So let's just do it. So we'll take the town. And then if Huan Shao wants to attack me, that's totally fine. Sounds incredibly upset about something. Right, so... We got a couple of capture... Oh, this is a wine vendor. Sweet. And we got a uh, meditation garden. How nice of you to build up these buildings for me. Okay, so oh, this side looks a lot better to attack from, right? So, yeah, over here we've got loads of towers. So, the towers, again, are quite strong right now. We have, of course, got the ability to reduce uh, ranged... Well, to 100% ranged block chance, so we don't take any damage from ranged for 30 seconds. But even so, we, we want to minimize it much, as much as possible. So, we either attack from here, but there's not really much room to go after this. We just still be choke pointed right here. Or attack here, and there's a lot more room to go into here. Um, and these towers, no, they wouldn't be in range. So yeah, we'd only be get sh getting shot by those two towers. So I think that's the right way to go. So that is what we'll do. We'll plop, uh, actually no, we'll plop the arches up front. Because we have that range block chance, so I might as well make use of it. They have two arches as well though, so we've got to be a little bit careful. Um, and then our spears, of which we have six now, seven now even. That guy is there too. So I don't know exactly how, what these guys are going to be doing. You guys are already wounded, so let's just leave you out entirely. I, I won't need this many units. Um, I, I really just got to make sure that they're all in range of that ability, to be honest. That's all that I care about right now. Guan Yu and Zhang Fei are going to charge in like mad, but only after they... Um, only after we've, we're already in range of the towers. Because if we run them up into the tower fire, they will get absolutely wrecked to Runeed. So we got to be careful of that. And our free cav, this is one of those things where, I, you know, it sounds like, well, just send them over here and, and, and run them around. But if I do that, I will lose half of these units before I even get to the towers. It's so much damage. Like, it's not it's not a joke. I'm not trying to be funny. Alright, so I'm, first of all, I'm going to run. And I'm going to make your you guys walk. Because if you guys run, you're going to be running out ahead of us. And we don't want that. And you don't want that. I'm probably not going to bother using this ability until we get into range of their archers as well, like their actual archers. Otherwise, it's a bit of a waste. But yeah, once we get into position, okay, I'm going to have to run you up now. You guys can run up as well. We're not in range of their archers yet, but we will be very soon. Their other archer is actually not here, which means we're only firing against one other archer, which is kind of useful. I don't even necessarily want to use that right now. Let's just run you guys up, I guess. And then while that's happening, I'll uh, I'll send them up as well. All right, we're firing now. I should hope so. There's the other archer. Okay, so if they start firing at me, I'll use this ability. Right now, it's I mean we're taking a lot of damage. You can see 
but I would prefer if they are also firing at me. Okay, there you go. So now I'll use the ability. Because these guys are getting into range. Okay, so now it's also time for you guys to then run through. Because this is the perfect time to do that. What the hell was that? Did you guys see that? I'm gonna also try and actually get up here and capture the towers, because then we just ignore all the damage. Even better. Uh, you guys might want to run up too, I guess. Maybe do something. I don't know. Okay, so getting to melee of the archers stops them from firing a little bit. More special ability. Well, except everyone's moving away, so it's not going to be as good anymore, but alright. Uh, why don't you come up too? Get in here. Are we capturing the towers at all? Uh, no, we're not. It's completely controlled by them still. Fair enough. Okay, we got this archer completely distracted though. So now it's a slog fest. This is basically the battle from now on. It's just going to be slogging it down. I'll try and run my cab in here. It's going to be difficult to get him through, but probably still worth a try. Zhang Fei having a great time over there. There are two. Oh, there we go. We broke a uh, archer unit. No, the people's warbound. Okay, already archer units right there. Yeah, you keep distracting them. That's fine. Their captain. There you go. I was gonna say their captain should be here as well. I don't can see them anymore. They've actually come back from running already. That's okay. Our archers are probably running out of ammo soon. Yep, getting uh, getting close already. That's okay. I don't want to run them through yet. I want to get my calf through first. See if I can actually get them through or not. Get your hamstring going again. Towers are still theirs. These units are getting a little bit low, down to half HP or so now. Okay, we got our route going though. And then another route, and two more units that are not happy right now. Get into them. Another route, another route. So there's two units left over though. This one, the captain is also not too happy about his current situation. That one's also not routed yet, actually. I'm just kind of hoping they were going to route. And that unit's not routed yet either, but if they do, we can get a mass route going here. There we go, that routed... Uh, almost fully routed now. They've routed... No, they haven't. They've routed... So it's just those two units now, I think. Nope, they've routed two. So it's just this unit now. These peasant warriors right here. Cavalry, get in there. Nope, they've routed two. I think that's it. Am I right? Or am I right? Have they come back from routing? No, they haven't. Is there another unit back there? Nope, there isn't. Well, if there was, they've routed now as well. Cool. Alright, so that wasn't, you know, it was a painful battle. Relatively, at least. Uh, they got you know, 116 kills of that unit alone. They've got about 200 kills or so. A little bit more than that. Mostly on these two units, but that's fair. Our archers did well. And our generals probably did well too, I just didn't actually get to see 150, 340. Yeah. Taking, a bit of, taking a bit of damage though, that's okay. Alright, so we're gonna just regularly occupy this town. And now, I should be able to trade with you, I think. Oh, yes, oh, and you're willing to pay me for that too, that sounds good to me. So I want you to pay me a little bit of money, please. I could also ask him to join a coalition with me. I wonder if he'd do that or not. This is probably slower than just typing it in, but I'm a bit lazy and this is easier. All right, so 257 as well as the 291 from the trade alone. Um, okay, let's make this deal first and then I'll see if I can actually get a coalition with him as well. I don't actually, wait, can I do coalitions? That's something that happens later. Hold on. You can see diplomatic treaties. Um, it's an alliance, isn't it? You must be equivalent of greater rank to second. Okay, so we got to be a second marquee before we can form coalitions. Fair enough. Okay, gotcha. But we got our trade. We got non-aggression with him as well. So we're making a fair bit of money now. We still need to recruit a couple more units, but I think we have the money to do that to do that right now. So I want to replace you with a. Um, Another mounted saber calf kind of militia. It's kind of a yeah, no, that's fine. And then I'll recruit two saber militia in here, I think. Unless I just keep this army a bit, you know. I, I guess I don't. It doesn't really matter where I put units. I definitely want to have these two replaced, though. Yeah, so we'll do that. I'll replace you with that one. Here's another one. This unit 
Spear Guard, very solid. They've got a shield, a massive shield, so they're very good against archers. Problem is, they're not militia. So I pay 60 for these guys, I pay 160 for them. So while I want a couple of these in the army, I'm just not going to bother right now. Because I'm paying 100 more for a unit that a little bit better, perhaps. I mean, they're less offensive, they're just more defensive. Be nice to have a couple, but I don't need them. So I'm going to replace you with you. And you with you. And then I'll keep, I think I'll keep them this, the way they are. Maybe I'll replace the, these two with a couple archers. And then I'll put the, I'll put two more archers in here. So I haven't got much money, so I'll, I'll leave it like it is right now. That's fine. Okay, so hopefully this guy comes back and attacks me. But he's probably going to go back around and attack me in the mine. The mine has got a fairly solid garrison now, though. So I'm not too worried about that. Four units of cav, or five units of cav, in fact. That might be a bit too much cav. <laughs> anyway. Um, Alright, so we've got a couple buildings. This building is something that we cannot convert at all so we just can just can demolish it this building we can convert oh, we're, we're just a little bit shy of that money that's unfortunate um yeah i should have if i'd known that i wouldn't have done the units right now i would have preferred building or switching this over but that's okay so uh another thing we can do that is actually you know, that's gonna help me quite a bit actually this is it's a good thing i did that is uh, we can do an assignment. We have one, this is our uh, capital of a commandery now, so you, we can't do it in Dong because I don't own the cap capital there. But in the capital of a commandery, you can do an assignment with uh, any generals that aren't currently doing anything. Uh, and from what I've noticed, the Sentinels, this is the purple units, are very good at doing uh, assignments because they can supervise construction, which reduces construction cost by 10%, which is nice. For five turns, by the way, it takes a turn before him to, uh, he goes in there and when he calls back, but it, it, he's there for five turns. Reduces construction time by one turn, that's massive, and reduces the building upkeep, which is a nice little extra. You can also increase income from industry by 30%, uh, which I can actually improve by another 10% if I gave him uh, that follower that we had, this one. I'm actually going to give it to him, because I'll probably use him as a general at some point too. Um... So yeah, we, we can, um, it actually becomes 40% now. Well, it still says 30, but it probably, yeah, it takes a turn to update or something. It took, took a turn to update this one as well. Uh, or, and this is our special unique thing from having our unity, is that we can spend five unity, but give him plus 25 duration or satisfaction for five years. Which means that, um, basically, oh, that's interesting by the way, it takes one turn, but it takes five turns to get called back. Um, but it basically means that, yeah, you spend a little bit of unity, but you make him happy, which but then means for five years he's going to likely be giving you unity back again every t a single turn. So that's pretty good. We're only getting two from characters right now. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, because he's not happening any anymore. And, and I guess we don't get any from uh, from Liu Bei anymore. I don't know why we got it in the first place. but Or maybe there's a certain level of happiness. Like this guy is super green and this guy is regularly green. So maybe that's something to do with it too. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um... The point is, I'm going to do supervised construction, because then next turn, this will only take a single turn to do, and it'll be 10% cheaper too. But a single turn is more important, because otherwise it would have taken two turns anyway, so it would have been the same amount of turns in the end. Anyway, um, with that out of the way, there's no more diplomacy to do, I don't think. We haven't met anyone new, uh, or have we? Not really. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just end the turn. Our army is almost full now. We're missing two units, but that's okay. What the fuck was that move? So here's the an interesting thing: is that that guy uh, Huang Xiao is actually probably in this town, uh, and I would like to take this town because it means Kong Rong doesn't take it. If I if I take it, Kong Rong won't have it. So I f I'm kind of tempted to do that. The problem is though, if I do, then this army is going to come back and take this town from me. Then I, I suppose I can take it back from him the turn after again. I could also take out one of these two. Basically just like say, okay, Guan Yu... Actually, no, I'm not allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to take him out of the army because I don't... I'm not allowed to have two armies, so that doesn't work. Alright, so I can convert this over. I could do something else. So, buildings. I haven't even looked at this yet. So, normally, you have... Basically, three buildings in every category. Sometimes you have a fourth one. Like, for example, uh, this town, the small city of Dong, will have a fourth one because it's a um, it's a city on a river, so it has a port. So it has a, has a, a port special building, essentially. Um, there could also be a, cha a chance that if you have, have a fourth building for your faction unique building. Now, for us, our faction unique building is actually an upgrade to another building. 
Um, so it's a Shuhan tax collection rather, rather than the regular tax collection. But normally you, it, it could also be a fourth different building, basically. Um, so each category is like a, a different thing. This is government buildings, military buildings, learning, mar learning and market buildings, agriculture buildings, and economic buildings. Now I've noticed a couple of buildings that are just generally good to have. For example, to get food, you want to have uh, land development, which increases your food production, and then you want to have government support, which increases that by a percentage. Especially if you have several food buildings, like a farmland uh, resource or something, uh, which I think down here, or not here, yeah, Pen Peng Chang is uh, a farmland resource. So if you have that, the, you want to basically build your city around food as well, and then increase it with percentages, and then you know you get a lot more food than if you do it in another town or commandery where you don't have uh, a lot of food. So that's a couple of good buildings for food. Grain stores is always nice to have because it gives you reserve capacity. So if you do run out of food or something, you've got a lot of reserves, uh, uh, like reserve capacity, which means you don't run out, run out of resources as quickly or we don't run out of military supplies. Um, the state workshops is good because it gives a lot of money. So does the inn. So those are two good buildings for um, just making money. There's the military forges, which are kind of useful um, because it increases income from industry. This is basically the kind of buildings you want to have like a, a, yeah, this one. If you want to have like a, um, a recruitment province essentially but yeah so far from what i've noticed like if you want to go for food go for uh these two if you want to go for money go for state workshops and in so right now i think i'm going to go for the state workshops we also have a trade port here i don't think we're going to be able to take this for a while unless we can federate with kong rong um but yeah if we do manage to take that trade port we then um we get uh like another bunch of money from that because the trade port is basically commerce as well so it gives us more commerce income so yeah, basically, there's there's a lot of combinations that you want to go for. Uh, this building also gives us increased income from commerce. So you could go for full-on commerce, like if I get a shopkeeper here as well, and then we get that building, we can increase our commerce income by quite a bit. But for the moment, I think I'm going to go for the state workshops. Uh, we'll build that first, and then I'll switch this over next turn. Uh, I will keep this one, because this is the inn, essentially. So it's um, it's just, you know, lots of money making. Horse exchange is the, yeah, the inn building slot, essentially. Um, okay, then what else have we got to do? We got a couple units to recruit, so I think yeah, we got all the money left, a little bit of money left over, so I'm go gonna go ahead and do that. Um, so yeah, what I'll do, if I really wanted to min-max this the way I, I wanted to do this, I would recruit these two units in here, and I would replace all four of these units of archers. But right now, I think I'm not going to bother because that would just cost me a lot of money for no reason. What the hell? These guys are only 21 upkeep now. We've somehow reduced it even further. I'm not sure what happened, but all right. Sounds good to me. Uh, oh, we can't reach anymore. What happened there? Is it because I recruited those units? That's unfortunate because that was the plan. It's going to attack that. Hmm. If I attack him, I might be able to finish him off. The problem is then if he takes his army and takes... Tai Shan. Man, that really sucks. Why can't I reach anymore? I would have done that. Did recruiting those units reduce my movement somehow? I guess so. I don't know. Well, in that case, I think we'll go ahead and finish him off. Yeah, reach. Wait. Oh my god, we can't reach. Are you kidding me? That must be like the tiniest bit of movement. What? So I would have also been able to do this if I hadn't actually... Are you kidding me? Okay, well, let's just head back then, I guess. Oh, wait, that reduced all... What the hell's going on with my movement right now? Okay, well, let's see what happens now. This could be very bad, actually. We could lose our town immediately, which also means that we lose the building that we're building there. Oh, there's... He... has arrived. Okay, and... Oh, and that taken is, is now taken by... Uh, by Kong Rong. So, yeah, that sucks, because I really would have liked to have taken that, but unfortunately it didn't work. I wonder, though, if I had taken that. He might have already been over here somewhere. I'm not sure if he moved from there to there in a single turn. Anyway, brothers in arms, it has been a long time since you've been your, since you've seen your sworn king. China is fast, and the country's needs are many. You've been separated in the name of progress for so long. Upon being reunited, there is little anyone can do to stop you embracing overjoyed at see finally seeing one another again. Apparently, Li Bei and Zhang Fei haven't seen each other for a while. I know that's the case in the story, but don't know about right now. Okay, so he is kind of wounded. Honestly, I don't know if he'd be able to take my town here, because the garrison here is fairly decent. It's a little bit wounded as well, though. I think we'd stand a solid chance, though. Can I reach this town in one turn? No, I can't. So I think what I'll do is I'll um, 
I'll just kind of follow him, but I'll follow him in Force March stance, which doesn't mean I don't replenish. That's the thing about Force March in this game, which I think is fantastic. I think you shouldn't replenish when you're in Force March stance, because you're already spending the full, like, couple of months that you're moving, essentially. You're, you're marching even faster, and you have to get to the destination, and how do you have time to then recruit units, you know? It doesn't really make any sense to me. So I think it's fair that you don't get replenished, or you don't get, um... Yeah, you don't get replenishment, essentially. So I'm going to move up. I'm just going to move up behind him, essentially. If he wants to attack my town, fair. I'll take it back next turn. If he wants to move past, that's fair, too. I'll attack him in the city of Dong. Um, other than that, we have uh, this conversion to do. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we can end another turn. I think he's going to run it past. I don't think he's going to attack the town. Wait, did he just stat? He, did oh, he didn't actually move at all. He wants to pay me money for military access, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that. I think six twenty-five. He was offering me. I want more money per turn, please. Uh oh, wait. What the fuck? Okay, he just doesn't want to give me money per turn. No, yeah, six six twenty-five is way better than I could have gotten there. So we'll do that. Can you do six twenty-six though? Just out of curiosity. No, is that one Koku or sorry, the one? Bucket, whatever the hell this is called in this game. There was actually a name for it, I think. I don't know. Either way, he decided to stand there, so I can just go ahead and murder him now, which is nice. Dao Chan, the minister Wang Yun, fearing the tyranny of Dong Zhuo, sends his adopted daughter to the capital. His plan is to have her destroy the relationship between Dong Zhuo and his adopted son, Lu Bu. So this is uh, part of the romance story. Not the actual story, but romance. Uh, like, not records, but romance. Uh, basically, Dao Chan, yeah, she, he, he, he essentially, uh, Minister Wang Yun, essentially sent, or he invited Lu Bu. He's like, "Would you like? Well, here's my adopted daughter. Do you like her? Oh yeah, you want to, you want to marry her? Sure." And then, so that was a plan, basically. And then he invited uh, Dong Zhuo over, and then Dong Zhuo is like, "Oh, it's a nice daughter," and he's like, "Oh, you want her?" And then Dong Zhuo is like, "Yeah, please. You, you want to take her with you? Yep." And then Lu Bu got mad, and then, long story short, Lu Bu murdered Dong Zhuo. That's, that's the way it goes. I just told you the f a big part of the Three Kingdoms in like half a sec half a minute. Um, anyway, we got an ancillary, the eavesdropper, which is nice for you. You've already got something. Yeah, that trade influence is better right now, I think. Um, Character development's irrelevant right now. We upgraded the horse exchange. I can upgrade one of these buildings now with the money that I have. This is an extra uh, 100 income. I could also upgrade the actual town. I think that's probably better right now, so I'll go for that. Um, and then we are going to attack him. He's going to run away. And then I'll be like, yo, can you please not run away? Okay. So, we're going to murder this army, but we're going to end it the episode here, and we'll murder him next time, I think. It's a good ending for the first episode. We haven't really done too much. We took a town. Um, but that's okay, right? We, uh, we again, this, playing as Liu Bei, we can only have one army. We kind of have to play a little bit slow anyway. We don't want to expand too fast. So, that's going to be next time. Until then, thank you all very much for watching. A final quick word, if you guys are interested in buying Free Kingdoms yourself, Please, please consider using my link in the top of the description. Um, you can get the game cheaper than you get it on Steam. It's an official retailer. You get the Yellow Turban DLC as well. Um, and uh, if you use my code, Mr. Smart Donkey, or no, sorry, I think it's just Smart Donkey. It's in the description. Uh, you get an extra 10% off as well. And I get, you know, a little bit of commission. So it helps the channel and you get the game cheaper. And it's just an official Steam key. So thank you. Hope you do that. If not, you know, still I still love you. Until next time, have a good day and goodbye.